Have you ever seen the Sandia F4 Phantom video? Of course, I, I was there. Hmm? Oh, you were there? <laughs> yeah, but that's something else. Because in this case, it see, in the uh, Sandia F4 test, uh, we had this great big chunk of concrete mm -hmm. and a relatively light plane. What happened to the plane? Did it vaporize? Was there pieces left? Or? Oh, yeah, there were pieces left. In fact, the wings went out. The uh, parts of the wing that didn't, that wasn't covered by the target uh, moved out, and the rest of it ended up in a pile down below. Yes, see, we did that, too, for the F4, mm -hmm. and that's what happens. If mm -hmm. the mass, if the sitting mass is a lot and the hitting mass is low, then the sitting mass wins. Mm -hmm. uh, but see, bear in mind uh, that... Uh, the World Trade Center had very light steel columns in front. Yes, not, they were not very heavy. Not, not as heavy as the columns in the Pentagon. Yeah, but they were, they were not. I, I think what we see makes sense in terms of physics. Mm -hmm. But we're going into very complicated physics. I mean, I would be lying to you if I said I know everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, if I knew everything, then I would know exactly what happened inside the building. Uh, we had this great big chunk of concrete mm -hmm. and a relatively light plane. Quick. What, d what happened to the plane? Did it vaporize? Was there pieces left? Or? Oh yeah, there were pieces left. In <laughs> fact, the wings went out. The uh, parts of the wing that, didn't, that wasn't covered by the target uh, moved out and the rest of it ended up in a pile down below. Well, hopefully no. Huh? <laughs> uh, but that's a very small mass. The bug mm -hmm. is a very small mass. If it had a little bit higher mass, if it had been a pellet, uh, it might be a different result. And plane? We yeah, do the, same the World Trade Center would be hurt as well as the plane. Mm -hmm. but yes. See, we did that too for the F4. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. Mm -hmm. If the mass, if the sitting mass is a lot and the hitting mass is low, then the sitting mass wins. Mm -hmm. uh, but see, bear in mind uh, that uh, the World Trade Center had very light steel columns in front. Yes, not, they were not very heavy. Not, not as heavy as the columns in the Pentagon. They did, and even with the reinforced columns. Well, not exactly. Managed to survive. I wouldn't believe it. There's got to be deceleration. Yes, mm -hmm. on, the, on the chunks of the airplane that hit the columns, there was some deceleration. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, all right. But if you're interested in getting that thesis... Yeah, I would love to. Uh, I'll do that, yeah. I can give you an FTP site, and you can download it from there. Okay, uh, I'll look forward to reading it. You see, Sandia made a test later mm -hmm. uh, with a chunk of concrete that was 24 inches thick, but reinforced concrete. Mm -hmm. And in that case, the water went through. Well, it's just water in a can. <laughs> Well, let me ask you a question then. Uh, suppose I have a two-foot-thick reinforced concrete slab, 24 inches thick. Mm -hmm. right. I fill... So are you talking about concrete or steel? Reinforced concrete. It's full of steel inside. Okay. Okay. Reinforced concrete. Very heavy. Just stuff that they make shelters out of. Mm -hmm. All right. And I hit it at a very high speed with a barrel of water. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the barrel of water will go through the concrete? We analyzed World Trade Center 1 and the Pentagon, but not the World Trade Center 2. Well, it is an interesting question. Uh, of course, uh, you know, believe it or not, when I first started uh, this type of analysis years ago, I, I had the image of a truck hitting a building, say. Right. Uh, in which case one thinks of the strength and stiffness of the truck. Mm -hmm. However, uh, when an airplane flies at a speed of over 300 miles per hour, what hurts the structure is the energy that is transmitted. Uh, let me give it to you this way. Uh, you see, we took one year to model the airplane very carefully. Mm -hmm. And we made an analysis. And then uh, later, we took one week, essentially, to put the weight of the airplane uh, in a sausage skin, if I may use a, a metaphoric term. Okay. And use that instead of the airplane 
and we got the same amount of damage. It's what causes the damage is the energy. It's the mass times the velocity squared. As a matter of fact, it is. You know, uh, that was one of the things that uh, actually uh, gave me confidence. When we did the uh, Pentagon uh, structure, uh, when the plane hits that heavy front of the Pentagon, it decelerates, and the rudder makes the fuselage buckle. You know, the, the rudder overturns. Uh -huh and makes the fuselage buckle. Uh, so no, the parts of the plane that hit the columns do decelerate. Uh, but what you see in that uh, animation is what's going through the columns. That's what I wanted to tell you. My curiosity was this. There is no question about what's going on on the surface being realistic because it happened, you know, we, we know it happened. I, I think what we see it makes sense in terms of physics, mm -hmm. but we're going into very complicated physics. I mean, I would be lying to you if I said I know everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, if I knew everything, then I would know exactly what happened inside the building, but I don't. As oh. I told you, it could be 10 columns or 17 columns. I don't know. So I didn't have to analyze that. I was curious about what was going on inside. Mm -hmm. And that's why I spent six years trying to analyze it one way and then another way. And my overall opinion is that as few as 11 and as many as 17 columns may have failed inside. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell you exactly what that number is because the results are sensitive to what you assume at the beginning of the analysis. Mm -hmm. A large mass and a beer can. It can be shot through a concrete wall if it goes fast enough. 